Now, I live in the USA, which is a conglomeration of 49 wonderful states and then Ohio. Because f*** Ohio. And in America, one of our favorite pastimes is suing people. Both because we have about a million TV shows about court case drama and lawsuits, and also because it's really easy. Whatever you're suing someone for it doesn't even have to be illegal. It just has to be, quote, damaging. And this, of course, means that rich people can sue anybody for whatever reason, and poor people can go f*** themselves because they can't afford legal counsel. In fact, this is exactly what happened when YouTuber BitBoy sued other YouTuber Atozi for defamation over things he had said. The really important thing to remember is that Atozi didn't commit defamation, but BitBoy sued him anyway. Thankfully, Atozi had a pretty big audience that helped him raise money and the lawsuit was eventually dropped, but it was really interesting the amount of people that rallied behind him and basically pressured BitBoy into dropping the suit. And that's what I want to talk about today. YouTubers suing YouTubers, and why this is such a horrible idea. And to highlight this point, we'll be talking about CoffeeZilla getting sued by Logan Paul and Atozi getting sued by BitBoy. But first, we have to talk about what a defamation lawsuit is, because that's that's the kind of suit that was filed against both CoffeeZilla and Atozi. Then we'll get into talking about why lawsuits against YouTubers are idiotic. So defamation is defined as the act of communicating to a third party false statements about a person, place, or thing that result in damage to its reputation. It can be spoken or written. It constitutes tort or a crime. Now let's look at Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard as an example of a defamation suit that was actually successful. Amber Heard made false statements against Johnny Depp that resulted in damage to his reputation and also monetary damages, both in the movie roles that he lost because of it and also in the money he had to pay for therapy. Also, the difference in the original definition between tort and crime is that crime is something that involves several people or society at large and is specifically illegal. And tort is just something that affects one person individually and is damaging or harmful in some way. However, something can be both crime and a tort, such as assault and battery of one person, wherein there was only one person that was damaged, therefore making it a tort, but it was also a crime because assaulting someone is illegal. But defamation is more than just this definition, because it's extraordinarily hard to win a defamation case. To highlight this, let's look at the defamation case that Logan Paul tried to file against CoffeeZilla. In a court of law, Logan would have had to have proven five things beyond a reasonable doubt. The first is that CoffeeZilla made a false statement of fact, and this is already a very high bar for Logan to have met because of the investigation and the amount of work that went into CoffeeZilla's video series. It was very thorough, so to try and prove that these were false statements would be pretty difficult. Next, Logan would have had to have proven that the statements were communicated to a third party, which was like 20 million people on YouTube, so that part probably actually would have been pretty easy. Next, he would have had to have proven that CoffeeZilla was at fault for the statements and that the statements were specifically malicious. This means that if someone lied to CoffeeZilla about it and it made it into the video, then Coffee's not directly responsible for that. Logan Paul would have to prove that CoffeeZilla knew that everything was a lie and then still published that lie in his video docuseries with the specific intent of causing harm or damage to Logan Paul. It has to be malicious. Number four, Logan has to prove that the statement was not privileged. And this just means that it wasn't intended for private conversation. For example, if Coffee had texted a friend saying that Logan Paul was a scammer and that had somehow gotten leaked on Twitter, then Logan Paul couldn't sue for that because that would be considered privileged information. It was not designed for public consumption. Therefore, it is not defamation. But considering that Coffee pretty publicly published all of these videos on a public platform, I would say that would also be pretty easy to prove. And finally, Logan Paul would have to prove that he sustained harm or damage because of the statements that CoffeeZilla made against him. So he would have to prove something like Prime's sales numbers went down after the series went live, or he lost some kind of sponsorship because of the series. So once Logan Paul's proven all of this beyond a reasonable doubt, a judge still has to make a call on it, and those can be subjective. Now, proving all of this was already a nearly impossible task. The Johnny Depp case was an extreme exception, and that happened because Amber Heard's lawyer was, one, bizarrely incompetent, and two, the judge didn't permit them to enter a lot of evidence into court that they originally wanted to. So they didn't really have a defense. But even all of that legal mumbo jumbo aside, the results of this big expensive lawsuit in court case, I don't think would make a difference at all, even if they ruled in Logan's favor. And that's because YouTube is a game of reputation. Let's do a thought experiment. If you watch my channel, then you're probably familiar with YouTube legends such as Danny Gonzalez or Drew Good. And let's also say that you found out that Danny Gonzalez was a horrible person. He does things like 
chew on jawbreakers or pour his milk before the cereal in the morning for his breakfast. Like, really horrible stuff. Now, obviously, it's significant when someone with a platform that size turns out to be a horrible person. And it would suck for a little while that you could no longer watch his content without feeling like you were supporting someone who is a horrible person. But if you were to just scroll through YouTube, there's so many substitutes. Now, you've got the obvious ones like Drew Gooden or Curtis Connor. Then you go down the list a little bit, and you've got less obvious but still prominent people like Jarvis Johnson, Chad Chad, Nakey Jakey, Gabby Bell, Noah Sampson. And if you wanted to get really niche, you could find much smaller creators still, like Gunner TV. My point is that for every amazing YouTuber that's out there, there's a substitute that does something similar to what they do at probably comparable quality. A lot of what separates one YouTuber from another is fan loyalty, or how long you've been watching them, or nostalgia, or something like that. If Danny Gonzalez were to vanish off the platform today, then that would suck, yeah. But you've still got a ton of other YouTubers that do very similar videos and make very similar products to what he makes. So if you decided you needed to So if you decided that you needed to stop supporting him for some reason, you can still scratch that comedy commentary itch very easily. And that's why it's so easy for YouTubers to just appear and disappear. People stopped watching James Charles because his reputation took a tremendous hit. And there's also a tremendous amount of beauty and makeup gurus on YouTube. You can easily find another one with just a couple of minutes of searching that make fun cosmetic themed videos on YouTube. There's always another YouTuber that does whatever it is another YouTuber is doing. So if one of them has a scandal, it's pretty easy for an audience to just shift away from one YouTuber and towards another one that makes a comparable product. So in this YouTube cyberspace that I exist, sort of, I'm actually in a tiny office, reputation is everything because it's very simple for people to just find something similar made by someone else who doesn't have the same problems and issues that you do. So if you do something idiotic, like put out a crypto project that turns out to be a scam and your reputation takes a hit for it, You've already lost, even if you can somehow prove in a court of law that that other guy is technically not right in something he said, that ceases to matter. Your audience is gone. So if you're someone that loves crypto and crypto news and enjoys keeping up with the cutting edge of all things crypto technology based, then there's a chance you watched or liked BitBoy because he gave you the latest of all things blockchain related. And after he became a pretty prominent crypto based channel, he did some sketchy things and promoted some stuff that was perhaps not so ethical. But let's say you're a really big fan of his, and so you ignored it because it, you know, didn't really affect you, you never bought into the project specifically, and the videos he makes are still pretty good. But then say that he was called out majorly by a much larger YouTuber, which happened with Atozi. And this much larger YouTuber, Atozi, exposes the sketchy NFT and crypto-based projects that BitBoy is continuing to promote. But let's say even though that's happening with Atozi calling out BitBoy's sketchy products that he's promoting, you're a pretty big fan so you're still back and forth on whether or not you like or dislike him because he makes good information and good videos about something you're interested in. And then, wait, what's that? He's suing the YouTuber that called him out? And at that point, you might decide that's too far because a lot of YouTube is people talking about other people. So trying to silence someone that said something about you that you don't like when it's kind of true makes it really hard to continue to support that person, even if you were a pretty big fan of them early on. And even if you continue to be a big fan of them, say the big YouTuber calls out the YouTuber you like, and suddenly there's a lot of heat around this guy. And maybe it doesn't look so good that you're a fan of them and the stuff they put out. So you check around to see if there are any other channels that put out crypto-based news and you realize... There's so many of them. But then it suddenly occurs to you, why would you support this guy who's promoted scummy projects in the past that have been rug pulled and then tries to silence people who are rightly criticizing him for that when you could support these dozens of other smaller channels that are probably run by more honest people who are just really passionate about the same things you are in crypto and blockchain and NFTs. These people probably aren't gonna take sketchy sponsorships or try and push you towards a rug pull. Substitutions for YouTubers are everywhere and it is unbelievably easy to stop watching one YouTuber and just start watching another. So if your reputation on YouTube takes a hit, that's absolutely massive because on this platform, YouTubers are the most replaceable commodity. There's always other people doing the exact same thing. And in some instances, maybe they find someone else that's doing it better. So when you shill a rug pull, get called out, and then try and sue the person into silence because you're scared about your reputation taking a hit, then you're drawing so much attention to it. And not only are you doubling down on the things that you did, you're also suggesting that your audience is just idiotic enough to believe you. And this is really important with all of these lawsuits 
tweets and statements made following up to try and save reputations. People aren't idiots. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people that are idiots, but by and large, people are pretty well able to sniff out garbage when they see it. And that's why for every one person that invests in a scam, there are literally millions of other people that didn't invest in that scam because they knew it was a scam. And especially once something has been fully exposed as a scam, to then assume that people still don't know it's a scam, even though all the evidence has been laid out there, is to assume that everybody is an idiot. And this is exactly what happened in the case of CoffeeZilla versus Logan Paul, because Logan Paul's initial response was completely incorrect. But his ego was so big that he just assumed everyone would believe him and go and attack CoffeeZilla. But obviously this isn't what happened, because he had to turn off the comments on that video, and then he had to turn off the comments on the next video, which was a promotion for his prime hydration drink because there was so much backlash about this. This assumption of idiocy and naivety is so condescending, both towards his fans and also the people who are being critical and calling out what he's doing. And similarly with BitBoy, he thought that when he sued Atozi, people wouldn't hear about it. And if they did, he assumed they would be on his side. But Atozi made a video that was so good that people, even if they were supportive of BitBoy up until this point, when they went and watched the video, they realized he was just full of trash. And it's wild how big some of these influencers' heads get, where they just assume that everybody will fall for whatever they're shilling and then believe them when they say it wasn't their fault. And even though there are, unfortunately, people that do fall for these scams, there are literally hundreds of millions of people who don't because they have common sense. So when you put out a video like this, are you just assuming that your entire audience is just full of drooling zombies who will believe anything you say, even though the opposite has been very extensively proven? Do you think we're that dumb? So in conclusion, even if your ego is really bruised because you made a horrible decision in real life, don't sue a YouTuber. Not only will your reputation take a tremendous hit, and your reputation again is everything on YouTube, but also the people who keep up with this kind of thing, they're not mindless idiots. They're people with real, rational, logical thought that will be able to see right through any lies that you're telling. So have some respect for yourself and for others. And when you make a mistake, just own up and apologize like an adult. And then stop shilling scams, Logan.